Thank you for the time given to me to present my paper with the title of Workload and Fatigue Assessment on Air Traffic Controller. My name is Vivi Trianti and the other authors are Hasbian Abdul Aziz, Hardianto Eridia Study, and Yasirli. We are from Institute Technology Bandung and Atma Jaya Catholic University of Indonesia. In the era of technology, there are a lot of uh, tasks that need more mental uh, capability than the physical capability. The tasks usually need uh, capability to think or need our cognitive skill. The task is called cognitive task. There are certain uh, part of our cognitive source that uh, that there is needed to come up the cognitive task. It is called mental demand. And then to overcome the mental demand, uh, usually we we pro we ca it can cause a mental workload. The more difficult uh, the job, and we need more attention or vigilance to do the job usually the mental workload is getting higher. If we experience uh, the mental workload for a certain time, then it can cause fatigue. As we know, fatigue can cause uh, performance degradation. And performance degradation can cause error or maybe accident. The example of cognitive job is a traffic control and the officer is, is called a traffic controller. A traffic control is a service whose duty is to prevent conflict uh, among the aircraft. Its main tasks are to regulate air traffic and to provide information and support for the pilots. Due to the mental demand, uh, it is usually related to the complexity of air space and operational traffic condition. That's why in our research, we interest to uh, analyze the mental workload in air traffic controller. So the objective of the research is to estimate the mental workload and fatigue condition of air traffic control controller in a real work system. The ADC work was chosen because it has a combination of three things. Because it's potential to experience a high mental workload, it needs uh, constant vigilance during the working time, and it also, have, also has a high working risk. The main method that we use for the research is a survey. The survey was conducted in May 2019 at Airport X, Banten. Uh, the airport is the biggest and busiest airport in Indonesia. Uh, we make the survey on two units of ATC, namely ACC and APP. In one shift, the number of questionnaires were randomly distributed to officer in both units with the help of supervisor. In each shift, the assessment of workload was conducted only one time. Uh, however, for the level of fatigue, uh, it was done twice before and after doing work. During the survey, uh, 257 questionnaires uh, were successfully collected and processed. For the workload assessment, we use NASA TLX approach from Hart and Stephen. Uh, it consists of six subscales. It is mental demand, physical demand, time pressure or temporal demand, prestation, effort, and performance. Meanwhile, for the fatigue assessment, we use temporally fatigue checklist, or usually it is called temporally cruise status check. The, uh, the scale was validated in aviation study.
for the result for the workload uh, the hypothesis one is etc is a work with high mental workload actually from literature there is no clear cut of which uh, point or which score that mean high or low or very high mental workload usually it is specific only for certain job so for the job of ATC we use previous study that using 24 ATC here we use the percentile 25 15th and 75th and then we use it as a, a cutoff for medium high and very high then we compare it with our study in our study uh, the score is uh, like in the table and then we found that mental demand time pressure and effort has very high score and the category is very high then for overall mental workload it is in the category of high so it is uh, on borderline then the next result is about fatigue assessment for hypothesis 2, there is an increase in fatigue during his or uh, at cost work period. We'll calculate uh, the uh, fatigue level before and after work. And then it is the result. When we compare it using parity test, there is a significant increase in fatigue during work, work period. And then how can we interpret the result based on the table from previous study uh, actually the fatigue level before and after uh, working still on a level level that can be acceptable because in score 4 performance degradation degradation is possible but not a significant factor so the level of fatigue after work is uh, still acceptable and then we will uh, if we want to relate between the mental workload and fatigue workload based on the p value uh, we can see that there was no strong evidence that the difference in mental workload level have a significant effect on fatigue however based on the score we can find that the fatigue tend to increase after work the increasing value tends to be higher in higher workload although the increasing is not sig significant from the study we can conclude several things and the first one air traffic control is a job that requires the ability to remain vigilant and make decisions continuously throughout its working period the task demand can cause relatively high workload. At the airport X, the workload felt by officer was relatively high, especially in aspect of effort, mental demand, and time pressure. The high workload doesn't cause excessive fatigue in ATCO. However, fatigue before and after work significantly increase, but still within the limit of reasonableness. No significant evidence to prove the increase of fatigue is related to an increase in mental load. As a suggestion for further research, it is advisable to investigate further the factor that associate with the mental workload and fatigue, including factors that related and not related. This is the end of my presentation. Hopefully this presentation is useful for you. If you have any question, please feel free to contact me at fifi.rianti at 2 at gmail.com. Okay, see you in the next ECM conference. Bye.